So we're basically just going to release 10 grabbing birches here. And yeah, I'm not crazy. This is genuinely a really good way to get trainer points. What is the crack lads? Welcome back to part two of our beginners tips. There are some good tips in here as well, even if you're not a beginner. So do watch the video. The first one is to log in every day. <laughs> I know this is a very basic one, but some people will just stop playing for four or five days. They're either pissed off with the game or they have a bad result. I've been there. I've done it. And then you come back and you find, yeah, I mean, I should have logged in for the last couple of days. So even if you don't have time to play any matches, do try log in once every 24 hours. Just log in, takes 10 seconds, boot up your console, especially when you have a special login bonus. So just a reminder on that there while we are at it to kick this video off. Tip number two, I promise they get better from here, lads, is to flip players for trainers. So this is a very, very good tip, I think, that a lot of people don't do. And people always ask me in my live streams or my videos, how do I have so much trainer progression points or trainer XP? And this is how I do it. So you will notice there at the top of the screen, I have got nearly 8 million GP. This is from doing all the events, logging in, getting all the bonuses. I mean, they practically give away so much GP. Everyone has a ton of GP now that has been playing the game since the beta way back when. So what we're going to do here is we are going to get players, four star players with a player value. We're going to sort them by overall rating to get the cheapest uh, four star players that we can possibly get. So in our case, we are going to be going for grab and birch. There is a secondary reason for going for grab and birch as well. I always recommend going for a player that you might possibly want in your squad. And I'll tell you that in tip number three, because it's a really key one as well that a lot of people don't know. So all we're going to do here is buy multiple versions of Graven Birch. He's 40,000 roughly. So we're going to be spending what? 43 grand on this player. So if we spend, you know, if we buy 10 versions of him, then we're going to go back into my team. We're going to go into players. We're going to sort this as well uh, through the list actions. And then we're going to sort by players that we have recently signed. And then once we get that, we are going to see all our Graven Birch. Look at that. They're like Pokemon, lads. They're just their duplicate Pokemon. But anyway, this is what we're going to be doing, right? We're going to be just selecting all of these and we are going to be releasing them, right? Because none of these players are going to be... We're, we're basically using these as, as flipping, right? Flipping them to get GP and to get trainer points. Not so much GP, but the trainer points is what we're at. So when we release here, we're going to get 40,000 trainer points. It's not a massive amount, but if you're like me and you've got a ton of GP lads that you genuinely are not going to spend before eFootball 2024 comes out, you have a pretty stack team you're getting free players you're getting the match pass players you're getting you know the free players every month with the login bonuses and all that if you've got a ton of gp i definitely think trainer programs are way more valuable than gp and you can use that to do that now we are going to take a look at some of the lower rank players so this is dante he's only ten thousand, but you'll just see the discrepancy here right so he's ten thousand. we're going to get what a hundred points per trainer like that's not enough. So I would definitely recommend to buy a player that's at least a four star. Dante is obviously a two star. So buy a player that's four star and stack up the trainer programs. I also mentioned about going for players when you are stacking up the trainer points and the progression points as we did with Graven Birch there. I also mentioned about why you should do that and it is to hunt for shiny cards. So again, I mentioned Pokemon. This is very similar to Pokemon as well with a shiny Pokemon if anyone that has played it. So far here, we're going to be signing Reese James. He's perfect. He's a five-star player, but he's only 100,000. So we're going to get max trainer points for this guy, better than we could get, uh, you know, for other five-star players that are, you know, better bang for your buck. And all we're going to be doing here is signing players like this that we could eventually fit into our team. And hopefully we get lucky with a shiny player. Now, what do I mean by a shiny player? Well, this is exactly what I mean. So a special player has been signed. It's roughly one in a hundred, right? It's roughly one in a hundred is what they say. And you'll see that the shiny card is kind of glistening. Um, it looks like a foil card. And it will also pop up that this player is apted out wide and has the cross specialist. So I could not have got a better card for my squad. I play out wide and I like cross specialist. And now that means that we have got a 99 team play style proficiency Reese James that we can just maximize his progression points into his actual stats without having to worry about anything else. Tip four is to lock players. So this all kind of falls into the one tip um, about not releasing players by mistake. I've seen people when they are kind of doing, you know, flipping players. They might have a trained up version of Reese James, or they might have a special version of Messi, or they might have a special version of Fred, or whoever it is that's like an anchorman, uh, you know, version of a player or something like that, a really unique card, right? 
and what they do is when they're flipping players or when they're releasing players to clean out their squad or they're looking to get trainer points, they'll accidentally release the wrong version of the card. So this is a very simple way of stopping that. I'm going to lock my Reese James, that is the special shiny version of the card. It has got 99 out wide team playstyle proficiency and a cross specialist. So all we're going to do is go into the player actions and we're going to go to lock here. Once we lock that player, we cannot release him accidentally unless we unlock the player. So when you click on lock, a little padlock will go beside his name and we can't release him. It says this player is locked, cannot release. So we will have to unlock him if we want to. So it's just like a two-step verification really of, uh, of unlocking a player because what will happen is you see there I've Messi locked as well. If I accidentally go to release Messi and I include him in these ticked boxes here, it will not let me release him. I can release the rest of the players and as we saw there, there's a, fi there's a five star player with the trainer points. You'll see there that with Reese James, we get 30,000 trainer points for um, a five star player when we release him. So we got, you know, we got more for grabbing birch, but obviously they're going to cost roughly around the same. So tip five, last but not least, is to get your formation to complement your style. I see a lot of people talk about this. I see a lot of comments. I see a lot of feedback and I see a lot of suggestions in my videos. So keep them coming, lads. Um, I do read every comment and try to get back to as many as possible. But the amount of people that I come up against that are playing a formation that does not suit their play style. I'll come up against guys that are playing a possession based play style like this. Um, you know, instead of that. But they'll be playing possession, you know, they'll be spreading the ball around and the player's positioning, the player's abilities, everything won't suit their style. And you can always tell the type of players. I mean, there's four types of players that you come up against any football all the time. You come up against possession guys, you come up against, you know, three bar pass assist guys that are going to automate a lot of their stuff. You come up against guys that are very aggressive, pressing the whole time. And you come up against a guy that is able to, you know, do a lot of tricks and a lot of skills and bamboozle your AI. And they're usually high rank players that know how to break the AI system and the animation system so that your players are kind of bamboozled, right? But this is a formation that if you are struggling, right, to find out, I kind of call this the beginner's formation. Try this formation if you are struggling to get to grips with games and you're struggling against high rank players or players that have got really stacked teams. It's basically a 4-5-1, but you've got no wingers, no right or left midfield fielders and you've got three AMFs but Neymar and Ronaldinho in this formation are going to play you know manually you're going to manually get to play as left and right midfielders here right you're going to be using these guys the ranking is going to stay up the rating is going to stay up we're going to have a three-man center midfield uh, or a two-man center midfield one DMF one CMF and then a three AMF uh, rotational kind of positions all the way and then obviously Carlos and Danny Alves if you want to manually play as wingers you can go with Carlos and Danny Alves you still have a four-man backs with Fred and Casemiro if you want to have that bank of four but then you're also going to be having a lot of attack and prowess with Neymar, Ronaldinho and Arascaeta up top as well so these guys you can manually go out wide with Neymar so touch and go and then you can sprint out wide Neymar's positioning is, is out wide as normal. You are playing out wide as well. So you're mixing a formation with a play style. So this is a very kind of like beginner's formation. It's a very overpowered formation. You're tight at the back. You're solid at the back. But you've also got the attack prowess up front. So that is it for another five tips, lads. Don't forget to subscribe and share more tips with me. I'll be back with part three of this video quite soon. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace.